Hi, this is Pre-Algebra Lesson 1-8, Divide Integers. In this lesson, we'll be able to divide integers. Let's start with explain it. The shapes below are used to show the relationship between each of the four equations in the same fact family. So, um, the same fact family means that all the representations are representing the same thing. So, they are representing the same facts, okay? So it says uh, a square times a circle is equal to a star, and the commutative property also works. A star divided by the circle is a square, and a star divided by a square is a circle. And these are the numbers that represent the shapes. Part A, suppose the star represents negative 24 instead of 24. What values could the other shapes represent? So in order for a positive 24 to become a negative, how would these equations change? Either one of them has to be a negative, right? So if you have the same signs, multiply together, you get a positive. But if you have different signs multiply together, you get a negative product. So either 8 or 3 could be a negative. Because the star is negative 24, the square could be negative 8, and the circle could be 3. Or the square could be negative, or the square could be 8, and the circle could be negative 3. Okay, you just need to know that negative times a positive or positive times a negative would equal a negative product. Part B, what do you know about the square and circle if the star represents a negative number? If the, if the star represents a negative number, like negative 24, you know either of the square or circle must have uh, a negative sign. So the square and the circle must have different signs. So let's reiterate that. If the star represents a negative number, the square and the circle must have different signs. What do you know about the star if the square and circle both represent a negative number? If the square and circle both represent a negative number, the star must be, because they're the same sign, the star must be a positive number number. That is the property of multiplication. So let's write that down. If, it's, if the square and circle both represent a negative number, the star must represent a positive number. Okay. Um, focus on math practices. Suppose the square represents negative 8 and the circle represents 3. Use what you know about integer multiplication and the relationship between multiplication and division to write the complete fact family. So, we're going to say the square represents negative 8 and the circle represents positive 3. So, we're going to We're going to use what we know to, to write the complete fact family. So square, negative 8 times positive 3, circle, will equal to negative 24. And the circle, positive 3, times a negative 8 is also a negative 24. And so negative 24 divided by a positive 3 
makes a negative 8. And negative 24 divided by a, a negative 8 gives a positive 3. Right? So we're going to write all of these down in this blank. Negative 8 times 3 is equal to negative 24. And 3 times negative 8 is equal to negative 24. Negative 24 divided by 3 is equal to negative 8. And negative 24 divided by negative 8 is equal to positive 3. Okay, let's look at the next page. Throughout this lesson, please remember, please think about how dividing integers would relate to multiplying integers. Let's look at example one. Divide integers with different signs. Machine drill is used to access water under the ground. If the machine drills the same distance each day, what is the change in the location of the bottom of the hole each day? So it's going to dig a hole every day with the same distance. We're going to use a number line to represent the change in each day. If the ground water represents zero, each part represents how, how much the drill drills each day. So negative 40 per day represents in four days the drill will drill negative 160 in depth. So the location of the bottom of the hole changed negative 40 feet or 40 feet lower each day. Because since we know it's 160 feet below ground level. We divide that into four parts and figure out how many, so figure out how, how many feet it drills every day, which is negative 40. And we're, we can also use inverse relationship between multiplication and division. So negative 160 divided by positive 4 would be negative 40. And that is an easy way to compute how, how, many it, how many feet it drills each day. So the location of the bottom of the hole changed by negative 40 feet or decreased by 40 feet each day. Now it's your turn. Try it. Suppose the machine drilled the same distance into the ground for three days and reached water at 84 feet below ground level. What was the change in the location of the bottom of the hole each day? Please fill in the blanks and answer this question. Come back when you're ready for answer. Okay, are you ready? So blank divided by 3 is what we're trying to get. We're going to divide not positive 84, a negative 84 divided by 3. So 3 times something should equal to negative 84. And so you know 3 times negative 28 should equal to negative 84. So negative 84 divided by 3 is equal to negative 28. So looking at the number line, each day it's going to drill 28 feet below the ground. So second day it's going to go 56 feet below the ground and the third day it's going to go 84 feet below the ground. So each day the location of the bottom of the hole changed by negative 28 feet or decreased by 28 feet. Explain why the quotient of two integers with different signs is negative. Why do we have a negative 84 divided by a positive 3? Or why does it result in negative? 
because we can use a division fact. Since negative times positive is negative, we know that negative divided by positive should be negative, right? Yeah, we know the multiplication fact. Since negative times a positive equals negative, negative divided by positive equals negative. That could be one way of explaining it. If you have another way of explaining it, please feel free to write down your own answer. Look at the next page. Example 2. Divide integers with the same sign. We're going to simplify negative 27 divided by negative 3. One way you can use a related multiplication fact. So if we divide negative 27 by negative 3, we know that negative 3 times a number, which is the answer we're trying to get, equals negative 27. So, uh, thinking about that multiplication, we know that 9 times 3 is 27, so it should be a positive 9. Another way, we can literally divide it. Negative 27 over negative 3 is represented as uh, a fraction. And if we multiply negative 1 over negative 1, which is just multiplying by 1, so you're not changing anything, you can get rid of the negative signs. And so, we know that 27 over 3 could be simplified into 9. So negative 27 divided by negative 3 is 9. Alright, now it's your turn. Try it. A, B, C. Simplify and uh, come back when you're ready for answer. Okay, part A. Negative 40 divided by negative 5. We're dividing by the same signs. So negative divided by negative is also a positive. And 40 divided by negative 5 should be... Negative 40 divided by negative 5 should be positive 8. 40 divided by negative 5. So now we have a positive divided by a negative. So that becomes a negative 8. And 0 divided by negative 40. If you rewrite this into a multiplication equation, then we know that 0, so if, if we say this is equal to a question mark, we know that 0 times a, a number, that question mark, equals a negative 40. Anything, wait, no, I'm so sorry. We have to change this because, yeah, negative 40 times a question mark is equal to 0. Anything times a 0 is a 0. So negative 40 times 0 should be a 0. So your answer here is a 0. Okay. But if you have a negative 40 divided by 0, then you have no answer. Alright, let's look at example 3. Write equivalent quotients of integers. Are the following quotients equivalent? In other words, are they equal to each other? Are they the same? Justify your answer. So let's look at these three quotients. Negative parentheses 18 over 4. And that could be a negative 18 over 4. You could divide 18 by 4 first because there's a parentheses. You can get 4.5 and that's a negative 4.5. Negative 18 over 4. What if you have a negative on the 18? Then negative 18 divided by 4 is negative 4.5, so these two are the same. 18, positive 18 divided by negative 4. 
If you have a negative sign on the denominator, you also get the same answer. So yes, each expression is equivalent to negative 4.5. So you know that any fraction that has a negative sign in front of the whole fraction or on the numerator or on the denominator will be the same number. Now let's look at the last, try it, it's your turn. Which of the following are equivalent to negative 5? So these fractions really look similar, but try to figure out if they equal to negative 5 or just 5. Come back when you're ready for answers. Alright, so the first one, 55 over 11 is equivalent to just positive 5 because the whole fraction is positive. Positive divided by positive is a positive. So this is not equivalent. This one, yes, it's a, it's a negative 5. So this is equivalent. This one is also equivalent. Negative 55 divided by negative 11 makes a positive 5 because the negatives cancel each other. Negative 55 divided by negative 11 becomes a positive 5. So this is not equivalent. 55 divided by negative 11 is also a negative 5. So yes, this is equivalent. Negative, parentheses, negative 55 divided by negative 11. You know that negative 55 divided by negative 11 is positive 5 from the fourth example. So this will be negative, parentheses, positive 5. And negative, parentheses, positive 5 is equivalent to negative 5. So this is equivalent. So only the second, third, uh, fifth, and sixth expressions are equivalent to negative 5. All right, let's summarize our lesson. The rules for dividing integers are related to the rules for multiplying integers. So remember that if the signs of the dividend and the divisor, that is the dividend, and this is the divisor, are the same, the quotient is positive. If the signs of the dividend and the divisors are different, the quotient is negative. It's the same as the multiplication rule. All right, that was lesson 1-8, uh, divide integers. If you have any more questions, please ask Ms. King in class. Otherwise, we'll continue with the next lesson, lesson nine, dividing rational numbers in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.